for me, I love that I'm a home baker that relates to a home baker because that is the sphere of the baking world that I want to be in and stay in. I want to make one item, share it with family and friends, and then get something else in the kitchen to, to make the next day. It's lost on so many people the value of having good ingredients in your kitchen. And these are not the ingredients that were good two years ago and you pushed them to the back of the pantry. <laughs> these are ingredients that you're monitoring their shelf life. You know that you're using fresh, you know you're using quality, because it really does matter. Platinum yeast from Red Star is my favorite yeast to bake with because it comes from a company that not only knows a home baker and wants the home baker to succeed and just a product that will work in any recipe that calls for yeast. Active, dry, or instant, I grab the packet of Platinum. Hi everybody, it's Brian Hart Hoffman here and I am so excited to be in the kitchen baking with you today. And I have to tell you, this is one of my favorite recipes I've made in a really long time. Today, I'm making an apple cream cheese brioche tart. And you're thinking tart? And I'm telling you brioche is the tart shell. It is so good, you are gonna love it. And it's a method you will use time and time again. Follow along at redstaryeast.com slash platinum to get the recipe and all of the steps for what you will see me make today. This is one delicious recipe that I can't wait to show you. So let's get started by preparing our apples. And the apples will be on the top of this tart. They are beautiful, the crowd will go wild, but we've gotta get some delicious flavor on these apples first. So in a large bowl, I have honey crisp apples that I've cut to a fourth of an inch for each piece. Now, apples that are good for baking include honey crisp and pink lady because they keep their structure and their flavors great. So if you make a substitution to pink lady, it will be okay but I recommend that you follow along with the Honeycrisp apples in your kitchen. You'll love them and you'll see the results are amazing. To this bowl, I am adding lemon juice. I'm adding granulated sugar and I'm adding some apple pie spice. So this is where we're gonna start building these amazing flavors that make this tart so unique. So with a baking tray that I've lined with parchment, I am going to spread these apples in an even layer so that they can get nice, even baking in the oven. And these will be off to the 400 degree oven for 12 to 14 minutes. Oh, these smell delicious. Our apples are done baking. And now all I have to do is let them sit on the pan on a cooling rack to cool completely. Then I'm gonna get the rest of our ingredients and we're gonna make the star of the show. Our brioche is on the way. Okay, let's make our dough. This is the true star of the dough or show and it is so easy to make, you're gonna absolutely love it. We're gonna start in the bowl of our stand mixer and I'm gonna start by adding a portion of my all-purpose flour. I've measured a half a cup. So I'm gonna start by adding my salt in one portion of the bowl here. You'll see that I'm gonna add my granulated sugar in another portion of the bowl. And then I'm adding light brown sugar here. And then it's time to add our platinum yeast from Red Star. Now this is the star of the show. It is the secret ingredient you never knew you needed, but once you use it, you will always turn to platinum yeast from Red Star because it's that oomph that your dough is missing, and it's a little bit of the insurance policy with dough strengtheners in this yeast packet that really make baking easy and add to the success in the kitchen. You're gonna absolutely love it. With all of these ingredients in the bowl, I'm now gonna add my paddle attachment. We're gonna start by bringing this together with the paddle before we switch to the dough hook. So just with your paddle, lower into the mixing bowl and let it combine these ingredients. I have a warm whole milk that I've heated to 120 to 130 degrees, and it's really important to not exceed that 130 degree mark so that it doesn't kill our yeast. We want to activate the yeast and get the beautiful rise that you're expecting. Then I'm adding room temperature eggs and vanilla extract. 
So just using the paddle attachment, I'm gonna beat at medium speed until everything is combined. And that could take up to two minutes to get really that nice combination of ingredients we're looking for. After two minutes, I'm gonna take the speed of the stand mixer down to the lowest speed so that I can begin to gradually add the remaining one and a half cups of all-purpose flour. And as I add this, you'll see that the dough will start to turn into a shaggy structure in the bowl. And using the paddle, I'm going to get everything combined until it's incorporated and then we switch to the dough hook. As you can see, as the flour is absorbed into this dough, it's starting to form that really craggy structure here and just to get the ingredients combined. And I do wanna scrape down the sides and the bottom of the bowl. And then I'll knock everything off this paddle and then switch over to the dough hook for the first kneading of our dough. I will beat this on a low speed on the stand mixer for six to nine minutes until I have a relatively smooth dough. And then don't worry, we're gonna come right back and start adding our butter. As you can see during the process, it's important to stop and scrape down the sides of the bowl and the dough hook turn the dough so that you get proper kneading during that first time in the bowl. Then after you have a somewhat smooth dough with good gluten structure, it's time to start adding our butter. And when we're making a brioche, you'll notice in most recipes, you add the butter after that first rather lengthy kneading time. That's so that we get good gluten structure before we add the butter to the bowl. Now with the mixer on a low speed, I'm gonna add my butter, and this is softened butter, one tablespoon at a time until each piece is combined. So this could take about six to eight minutes in total, but you just wanna make sure that each addition of the butter has been incorporated before adding the next. I'm adding the last piece of butter now. And as you add butter, you may notice that the dough splits or looks like it's kind of coming apart in the bowl. That's okay. And as the butter is incorporated, the dough is gonna come back together. That's why after we add the butter, we have another six minutes on a medium low speed. So you will take the speed up just a little bit after the butter has been fully absorbed. The way we know that our dough is ready for its first rise is to check for proper gluten structure by performing a window pane test. After pinching a piece of your dough, start stretching the dough from side to side and trying to get an even pane of this dough that you can see light passing through without tearing. But as you can see, this piece of dough tore too quickly and this large hole formed in the middle while stretching. So I'm gonna put the dough back in the bowl and check again every one minute after kneading further for that window pane test. After a few more minutes in the mixing bowl, you can see that as I stretch the dough from side to side, I'm getting this really beautiful thin piece of the dough that I can see light passing through, giving us a successful window pane test. Using a bowl scraper, I'm going to take our dough from the mixing bowl and place it on a clean surface in the kitchen where I will knead the dough four to five times just to get some nice structure back to the dough. And you see it may stick just a little in the beginning. And you just wanna knead this dough to get smooth and round. And you can start to see it picks up pieces on the counter and then use your hands to just pull towards you and form this into a smooth round where we will then immediately place our dough in a bowl and cover for 45 minutes to an hour until it's doubled in size. Look at this beautiful dough. Now, before I punch down the dough, I'm gonna do the right test to make sure that it has properly risen for this first rise. And what I'm doing is I have a little bit of flour on my hands because my hands tend to be warm and can cause the dough to stick with my fingers. So I'm using two knuckles and I am just going to make a big indentation into the top of the dough. 
And when I lift my hand up, this dough should bounce back halfway between where I inserted my knuckles or fingers. And then I know that the dough has risen properly and it's time to keep moving. So now I'm gonna punch down the dough and I'm gonna let it rest for 10 minutes before I start my shaping. I have a tip for you that I wanna share about this dough. So this is either a make ahead tip or just a tip to make working with this dough easier. If you wanna make your dough the day before baking, you could punch down the dough and cover and place immediately in the refrigerator where it will be fine overnight. Or if you wanna just work with dough that's cold and easier to handle, punch down the dough, cover and put in the refrigerator for about an hour and then you can keep moving. I find that the cold dough is a lot easier to work with. So if time is on your side, you can do that. Now, before I turn out the dough and begin shaping, I wanna prepare our pan. I'm using a nine inch spring form pan and I'm going to immediately spray this with a baking spray with flour. And when you're spraying with baking spray with flour, just do short spurts of the baking spray. You don't wanna flood the pan. And then just a little bit in the center to hold our parchment paper. After spraying, I'm gonna place a nine inch round of parchment paper in the bottom of the pan. This is also a great time for you to preheat your oven to 325 degrees. Now we're not ready for baking just yet, but we want the oven preheated so that once we have our tart ready, the oven's nice and hot, and then we'll get in for baking. So I'll pet the, put the pan to the side for a second, and then I'm gonna turn out my dough. Before doing that, I want to lightly flour my surface. So I'm just taking a little bit of flour and scattering it on the surface in a light coating. You don't want too much flour here, just enough to keep the dough from sticking as we roll it. Then taking a bowl scraper, I'm gonna remove the dough from the bowl and place it on the counter. And the first thing I like to do when working with dough is I like to shape the dough into what I'm wanting to roll it into. And in this case, I'm rolling this dough to an 11 and a half inch circle. It's important here to not flour the top of the dough so just pressing it into a round, using your hands to start getting the shape. And then I check for even consistency as well. If you need a little bit of flour on your hands, that's fine, or on the rolling pin as well, you just don't wanna be tossing flour onto the top of the dough. First thing I do is I take my rolling pin and I just pat the dough into a little bit more of the shape to get an even consistency. So a little bit of flour on the rolling pin and then I start from the center and roll out. I come back and roll towards me. And then just as you build your rolling skills, you can turn your dough halfway and start again at the center and roll out and towards you. Then give the dough a quarter turn and you start to get that nice round shape. As you're rolling your dough, if you see that it is pulling back to the center and it's not relaxed, Give it about five minutes of rest here on the counter and then come back and keep rolling. No need to force the dough into the right shape. We want it to be nice and relaxed. So now that I have the dough rolled to 11 and a half inches, I'm gonna take a nine inch cake pan and I'm gonna score this dough evenly just by pressing and making an indentation in the dough, just like that. Then I'm gonna take each edge of the dough and I'm gonna fold over about a quarter of an inch over that mark, and I'm going to pleat it into my tart edge. So you're just folding. I kind of do it on a diagonal, fold over. If you've made a galette before, this is a very similar style. And I'm just doing this all the way around. You may have to switch angles a little bit along the way or turn your body with it but you're just wanting to get this folded over and this is gonna form that beautiful crust to the outer edge of the tart. So I'm just gonna lift this dough in my hands with one motion in. And you can see that the dough might need to be reworked into the edges. If you have any areas that need to be recrimped, please go ahead and do that here. And then I'm gonna cover and let rise for 25 minutes while I make our filling. This filling comes together really quickly and all of my ingredients are pre-measured. And this is something I encourage bakers at home to do as well so you're not fumbling around in the kitchen as you add things because 
In the very beginning, we're adding a lot of our ingredients to the bowl of the stand mixer. I'm starting with unsalted butter and then I'm immediately adding light brown sugar, granulated sugar, apple pie spice, more of that amazing flavor that makes this tart so delicious, some salt and vanilla extract. And the first thing I'm gonna do is take my paddle attachment and get all of these ingredients combined. It's really important here to have your cream cheese at room temperature because it will help it combine into the mixture and become smooth. If you've ever tried to work with some cream cheese that's a little bit cool or you're rushing the process, you'll see those bits and clumps of cream cheese that haven't softened and gotten nice and room temperature where they incorporate their best. You can see this mixture is getting nice and smooth. I don't have any big clumps of the cream cheese, which is exactly what I'm looking for. Last piece is in. It's really important when we add eggs to mixtures that we get it fully combined before adding any other ingredients to the bowl. The egg wants to separate your cream cheese and the other ingredients, but then we give it a little bit of speed make sure it's getting nice and combined. And again, stopping and using your spatula to scrape down before we add our final ingredient. And finally, I'm adding just a little bit of all-purpose flour. This is three tablespoons. And then we'll have our beautiful filling mixture ready to go into the brioche. Our mixture is combined and looks great. Let's get our brioche dough back in here and assemble the tart. Next thing we'll do is we're gonna dimple the base just to give us more of that defined crust and then thin our base before we add our filling. So just using your hands, press the dough down, moving that thicker part of the dough to the edge and getting that nice flat inside of our tart. In the process, if you need to re-secure the edges, you can do that as well, just by turning that dough even more, giving yourself that crust edge that will hold the filling and the apples. Then we'll take our cream cheese filling and start to assemble our tart. After adding your cream cheese filling, use an offset spatula to get a nice even coating here, leaving that crust edge. And I wish you could smell this just even as I assemble it. It smells so good with the spices in the filling and then the apples are here next to me. And I'm so glad after all the work, it's time to fill this tart and get it in the oven. So with a nice even layer of my filling, I'll start by placing my apples in two concentric circles, just layering them one on the other as I build around the outer edge. And you can see the structure of the apples held up beautifully in baking, they're coated in the spices. And I'm just gonna get the nice detail here as I add them all the way around. After your apples are in the pan, one more thing to give this such a show-stopping appearance. We'll start with an egg wash, and this is just a combination of egg and water, and I'm gonna brush the edges of my crust. And this is gonna give this crust such a beautiful golden brown color in baking. Then just take your Swedish pearl sugar and carefully scatter it over the edge of the crust. And if a few pieces drop on the apples, that's okay. It's just gonna add even more deliciousness. But the goal here is to get a nice coating on the crust and you'll see how beautiful this is when it comes out of the oven, adorned with these crunchy little sweet bites on the edge. 
We've done the work. Now it's time for the oven to bake this beautiful tart for us at 325 degrees for first bake time, 20 minutes. Then you're gonna rotate the pan and cover with foil and then bake until this crust is golden brown and an instant read thermometer inserted to the center of the filling reads 175 degrees Fahrenheit. This may take 25 to 28 minutes more. And when you're finished, don't be concerned if the filling is still a little loose and jiggly in the center. Once you have that temperature at 175 degrees, it will set beautifully. This smells so good. I wish that you were here to indulge in this delicious tart with me, but I know you're gonna bake it at home so you can enjoy it too. This has been sitting out from the oven for 10 minutes. So it's now cool enough for me to get the, the pan removed and let it cool completely. But just before I do that, I wanna check with an offset spatula to ensure that the sides have not stuck to the pan and they haven't, this looks great. So now I can carefully un latch our edges to the spring form Oop. and the pan not slide off the counter and then lift the sides away to reveal this beautiful golden brown edge you can see the pearl sugar is the perfect crown for the apples on this tart we did the hard work we baked a beautiful tart and y'all i am so ready to dive in and enjoy but before i do that we're going to put a glistening finish on our apples by taking some warmed apricot jam and just brushing it on in a thin coat. This gives it such a nice shine as you serve this to family and friends. And I have to tell you, my mom's birthday is in October and she loves apple every single year in her dessert. So a platinum moment for me is serving this to my mom for her birthday. And then of course, share, sharing it with other family members that may come if my mom wants to share. But this will be amazing at her celebration. Mom won't know if I took one slice, right? Okay, maybe. Maybe she will. I'm gonna have to make her another one then before I go over for celebration, but here we go. And even when you cut, you may see the apples pull into the center, but y'all look at that. You've got that beautiful layer of brioche. You've got your beautiful cream cheese filling. And then of course the apples on top. This is beautiful. Oh, I don't even need a fork for this. I'm going right for it with my hands. Mmm, so delicious. Oh, that brioche makes for the perfect texture under that cream cheese filling and then the apples and the spice and it's oh so nice. I hope that you've enjoyed baking along with me today. And again, please visit redstaryeast.com slash platinum to get this recipe. And please tag us all in social media when you do because I cannot wait to see you baking this and how much you love it in your kitchens too. Thanks for baking along with me today, everyone. I cannot wait until next time.